let's move on uh, to an important segment with January 6th and some new video which was debuted last night on Tucker Carlson's show. So, of course, let's step back. Part of the speakership deal that Kevin McCarthy apparently had to agree to was to give thousands of hours of January 6th footage to the Tucker Carlson show producers that they could comb through to see if they could find some different stuff that had not been reviewed by both the January 6th committee and had not yet been aired by CNN, by the New York Times, or any of the mainstream media outlets. One of the clips that Tucker aired on his show last night is, I think, pretty extraordinary. It shows the famed QAnon shaman effectively being led through the halls of the Capitol by Capitol Police, multiple Capitol Police who could have taken him down at any one point. And at one point, Crystal opening the door to the Senate chamber for the QAnon shaman to then take those famous photos where he was literally on the <laughs> Senate floor. So let's go ahead and play this for everybody. Tucker is uh, narrating some of the footage here. Let's take a listen. Dangerous conspiracy theorist dressed in outlandish costume who led the violent insurrection to overthrow American democracy. For these crimes, Chansley was sentenced to nearly four years in prison, far more time than many violent criminals now receive. What did Jacob Chansley do to receive this punishment? To this day, there is dispute over how Chansley got into the Capitol building. But according to our review of the internal surveillance video, it is very clear what happened once he got inside. Virtually every moment of his time inside the Capitol was caught on tape. The tapes show that Capitol Police never stopped Jacob Chansley. They helped him. They acted as his tour guides. Here's video of Chansley in the Senate chamber. Capitol Police officers take him to multiple entrances and even try to open locked doors for him. We counted at least nine officers who were within touching distance of unarmed Jacob Chansley. Not one of them even tried to slow him down. Chansley understood that Capitol Police were his allies. Video shows him giving thanks for them in a prayer on the floor of the Senate. Watch. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for paying the inspiration needed to these police officers to allow us to go yeah, uh, I don't think there's a single innocent explanation for that. And one of the reasons why I think that's important is, as Tucker said, Chansley was not only sentenced, he's now serving, uh, I believe, a pretty long, what, lengthy- He said four years. Yeah, four-year sentence in prison. We should remember this, that the judge involved in this case and many other cases actually denied these defendants access to this footage, specifically because the defendants were like, hey, the footage is gonna show that these cops let us in there, mm -hmm. and it goes against the narrative. So anyway, I think that that certainly certainly is important when we're dealing with this. I'm not defending this guy. Clearly, he was off his rocker and clearly he was crazy. But, you know, you got nine uniformed police officers armed who are opening doors, effectively escorting him around the building. That's crazy. Uh, you and I were talking a little bit about the show. Yeah. I cannot come up with any innocent explanation for this. I don't ex think it exists unless they was just sympathized with him. Right. For part of the reason why he's like, Part of the reason he thanks them in his shamanistic prayer right. and as for Tucker allowing says, him on the floor. Sees them as allies. Right in the wake of, first of all, let me say, look, Tucker has a narrative that he has been pushing about January 6th and he, you know, has like attempted to cherry pick, I have no doubt, the footage that backs up his version of the day. Okay, yeah. so let's just put that out there. But that aside, let's deal with what is actually portrayed in this video because... I remember right after January 6th, there were all these videos floating around of like Capitol Police officers opening up the gates outside yeah, and people right. people on the left were like, and liberals were like, what the hell is this about? Like, why are you doing that? Um, now, it's also absolutely the case based on other footage that we've seen that there were violent scuffles and assaults and there were Capitol Police officers who were trying to keep the doors closed, et cetera, et cetera. But when you look at this footage, like, I want to know what was going on in their heads where they're just milling around or they're actively helping him find an entrance into the uh, chambers. How do you justify that? And it seems like, remember Sagar also, right after January 6th, there's a little bit of reporting that was very critical of mm -hmm. the Capitol Police mm -hmm. because the response was atrocious. I mean, we covered that um, investigation into how all of their riot shields were like locked in a bus that nobody had the key to. It was total Keystone Cops thing. And it was also, there was also continue to be huge questions about how it could be the case that you had infiltrators in some of these groups, we know that, and yet you were unable, when there was an actual like real threat going on here, to disrupt this event, and you were too busy like, you know, inventing 
uh, conspiracies for Gretchen Whitmer, or as uh, we covered on the show with Trevor, Trevor Aronson, the focus on like inserting agent provocateurs into Black Lives Matter. But, like you're doing all that stuff, but you've got infiltrators in these groups and you're not able to like muster sufficient security to disrupt this actual threat. So to me, it just adds to a whole lot of questions about what exactly happened with the Capitol Police, about whether they saw themselves as allies with um, these people who were storming the Capitol, and the failures of our intelligence and law enforcement agencies to get ahead of this threat when they should have had all of the assets in place they needed to know that this was ultimately coming. Tucker also exposed something important about Ray Epps, the uh, potential Asian provocateur um, who is on video multiple times saying we need to go into the Capitol. Minutes after texting his nephew, quote, I orchestrated it, Epps swore to the January 6th committee that he had left. Surveillance video clearly shows him on the Capitol grounds 30 minutes later after he told investigators that he had left the grounds of the Capitol. So he lied. He's just been exposed straight up as a liar to Congress. He committed an act of perjury. Now, do I think that they're going to refer him to uh, the Department of Justice and they'll prosecute what, potentially one of their own? No, I don't. Um, you also remember from the New York Times, their very sympathetic portrait of Epps. He's like, I've had to move and all that. They never asked him really point blank one time. They're like, hey, did you cooperate with the FBI? Were you an FBI informant? Let's also not forget the Proud Boys one of, you know, that has come out in the trial and the indictments was a, the leader of the organization was an informant. We also, from the Oath Keepers indictment and the eventual convictions and stuff that came out in the trial, there was a lot of FBI infiltration into some of these groups. So look, I don't know what happened. Uh, and I'm not saying that it was a total setup. I'm not saying that it was a peaceful day or any of that. Clearly, there was a lot of violence uh, that occurred. But... I think that there is a hell of a lot of questions to ask about the Capitol Police officers that were involved. Specific, I mean, the QAnon shaman effectively is what? He's like the mascot of yeah, what happened. He, he became the most visible symbol he got, of... He got nine cops who were standing outside and opening a door for an unarmed guy when he's walking onto the Senate floor. And also, I don't know if you people remember, but there was video uh, from the floor of the Senate where one of the officers was like, hey, like, just so you know, like, this is one of the most hallowed, important grounds. Well, why did you let him in there? I mean, why would you, why would you open the door to make sure that the guy can get into the chamber it seems to me like there was a you know there was like a, a chaotic period of actual exploration of the events of the day in the immediate aftermath of january 6th and then the democratic party decided the narrative they wanted to go with was the capitol police They're officers heroes. were heroes yeah, you're right. uniformly right. right and um I'm, again i'm not saying there weren't heroic efforts on that day mm -hmm. among individual members of the Capitol Police. But I think that these images raise a lot of questions about, that, to say the least, about whether that was uniformly the case. But they wanted this very black and white narrative. And so they killed any potential nuance. They, you know, didn't show the public any of this footage that paints a very different picture that's at odds with the very Disneyfied black and white version um, of events that they were P portraying in which the Capitol Police officers were the heroes and, you know, these individuals coming to the, the Capitol were the villains and they were clashing and that was the end of the story. So, um, in any case, like I said at the top, listen, Tucker has his narrative that he's pushing and he wants to pick the footage that is going to serve his narrative just like the Democrats had their narrative that they yes. were pushing and they wanted to pick the footage that, you know, ultimately backed up their point of view. I wish we could have a broader, more public revelation of all of this footage so that we could have the nuanced picture of that day that the American people still deserve and will probably never get. Part of the reason I'm not that troubled by it is like, look, at this point, the New York Times literally won a Pulitzer Prize for reconstructing the violence on January. You can watch every violent clip known to man that happened on Jan 6. This is the stuff that we have not had any real uh, uh, expose into. So look, I don't agree. I, I mean, I don't disagree. Tucker has his agenda. He's been saying it's a, what did he say? It was a setup, he basically. It was a false flag. I mean, it was a false flag event. No, I don't think it was 100% the false flag. Do I think that there were, you know, elements of informants and agents and all that stuff that were involved on the day of, of January 6th? I think that's effectively a fact um, to at me, this point. The bigger question yeah. isn't like, oh, did the FBI like set right. this up? Because, listen, honestly, seeing the way that they operate, I really severely doubt that they have the capability mm -hmm. and the competence to be able to pull off some like grand scheme such as this. I think the bigger question 
And Trevor Aronson, who's written a lot about the FBI and who we had on uh, for his podcast mm -hmm. about the, the agent provocateur and the BLM pro protests in Denver. I think the bigger question is, what is the FBI? How is the FBI so incredibly failing at their job when it comes to actual threats that they should be able to disrupt while they're so busy, you know, with these grand agent provocateurs here and Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plots there and going back in time, obviously, the, you know, effectively entrapment of young Muslim men with regards to the war on terror. Like, they're so busy creating crimes that they can then try to disrupt and ride in like they're the heroes that how do you miss? Was that distracting you from actually paying attention to the intelligence you could have been gathering from your infiltration of these groups? And if that's the case, like, what use are you ultimately mm -hmm. if you can't do the thing that you're supposed to do because you're so distracted by these, like, big shiny plots that you want to construct over here? So to me, that's the, the sort of bigger picture question about this day, about the operation of these agencies, and then specifically with regard to the Capitol Police, they really need to be. I, I wish there was one mainstream outlet with some level of credibility that would ask some questions about why were you just milling around? Why were you letting this dude, like trying the doors and letting this dude into the chamber? What is that about? Like, give us an answer that makes some sense here. Instead, we gave him $500 million more. Uh, we didn't fire anybody who was involved and we turned the United States capital city into uh, effectively the green zone from Iraq. So yes. yeah, that seems like a reasonable one. Good. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.